Okay, so the first class, we always give you an introduction, which is what is called microbiology. And uh, microbiology, same as your biology, I will say this is equal the science of microorganism. And uh, all those basic information related to microbiology, we just mentioned in the syllabi, so we're not going to go detail again. Here it mentioned about algae, bacteria, virus, protozoan, fungi. We are going to introduce you a little bit real quick. But our material will basically focus on bacteria. We also will talk about algae a little bit when we talk about the nitrogen fixing and the carbon dioxide fixing, carbon fixing. Okay, virus we'll briefly mention because you heard about it too much in the last three years. So what is microbiology, science of microorganism? Second question, following this, what is microorganism? This is, I always want to split this world. This world could be split in the middle. What is microorganism? What is organism? That means it is too small to see. Oh, sorry, uh, this means it's a live body. Okay, organism, which means it is a live body. What is micro means? This means it is too small to see. How small it is? Usually less than one millimeter, a couple of hundred nanometer sometimes. Because it is too small to see. So later on, we will talk about it. They need a tool which is called a microscope. And we will introduce you, talk about light microscope. And dark field microscope. And the laser can Focal microscope, fluorescence microscope, and uh, we will also spend in time talk about the electron microscope. Okay, and uh, we will have a lab section to practice using light field microscope. So that's a microscope, a microscope we need to rely on to do the microorganism. Now, what type of the microorganisms are there in the world? So the first question I want to ask you, can you guess how many microorganisms there? It's a huge. Roughly more than 10 the power of cities. Huge. And how many of them we know less than 5%, which means more than 95% of microorganisms are unknown. And we know only a little bit, because it is too many. This is a very normal stuff. The coronavirus happened, nobody knows what to do at the beginning. Although we have uh, almost 200 years of research for the virus, that's the reason. And the people also predicted every 15 years they could have those harmful pathogens come out. The reason is there's too many microorganisms, and what we know is very limited, is only around 5%. 95% we don't know. Okay, what are the examples of microorganisms? So let's give you some of the examples. Some of them you know, some of them you don't know. 
Okay, let's do it. Um, we will be separate them into different categories. The first one everybody knows is bacteria. So, for example, you heard about the football pathogen outbreaks all the time. There is like E. coli 0157H7 outbreaks in ground beef, for example. That's a pathogen. Will kill people. That's bacteria. You heard about salmonella in egg products or chicken meat. Those are the examples of bacteria. Very common. And I always make a joke. I said, even if you do not learn anything, after this semester, you will never forget that bacteria is E. coli. Regardless, you get A, B, C, D in this class. Okay, so that's bacteria. The second thing is fungi. You heard about fungi all the time. There are two different categories of fungi. The first one is molds, and second one is yeast. How we differentiate that? The growing temperature. Molds usually at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. Yeast, 35 degrees Celsius, and a little bit in the humidified environments. So how do we know there's a mold? You have a bread, you bite, and then you put in the dawn, the bench for like 10 days, you see, starts to show in greenish color. That's mold. How do we know the yeast? Someday have a heavy rain, and then you see the top ceiling, there's dripping of the water. And a couple of days later, you see the blackish color there, or brownish color there, especially in your water bus. That's yeast. Okay, so that's fungi. What else is a bacteria? Or what else is a microorganism? Parasite. Okay, so you can see here, we call it a protist, but we can say it's a parasite. So protist. Protists have a several categories. Protodon, let's say Toxplasma gondia. Pregnant woman should not recommend it to have a cat because Toxplasma gondia is the middle host in the inter intermediate, inter uh, the host is a cat. So they will cause miscarriage. So you'd better not have a uh, a cat, uh, if you're pregnant, being pregnant, brother. Algae. This is something really magic. This is created more than 80% of the oxygen in the world because they are going photosynthetic. Which means they are not similar to the bacteria. Bacteria use glucose to grow. They are using light as their energy resource. And with the sunshine even. So that's photosynthetic, is algae. Another example is slime molds. Slime molds has two different growth phases. One of them looks like Modes is phase one, and the phase two is like protozoan. So what's the characteristics of a protozoan? Protozoan, they need a host. Without a host, it's very difficult for them to survive. Okay, so that's a protest. What's the next one? Archaea. Archaea, how you understand that? You will be saying, we always say this is an old bacteria. You can understand that this does not develop very well. So let's say bacteria has a cell wall. 
the major components is peptidyl glycan. And we don't have a real peptidyl glycan, we have acetyl peptidyl glycan. And the bacteria grow, they move in, they're using flagella, and uh, alkia using endoflagella. So that's some of the examples for the alkia. Okay, all these things we talk about is using cell as a single unit. So that's why we call these cellular. Because they are using cell as a single unit. How about the others? This is what we talked about. There is other things we haven't talked. Last three years, what you suffered? Virus. Is that right? Coronavirus. COVID-19. COVID-19. Okay. Coronavirus. ID-19 because finding 2019. So, coronavirus ID 2019. What the virus looks like? I want to tell you one thing. The virus structure is actually very simple. You can imagine how easy it is. This is a virus. It's that simple. In the middle, it is DNA or RNA, and outside is protein. There is only two structure major. Of course, there is something else. The coronavirus, you have these things, the crown there will be shifted. That's why you have a lot of mutations comes out. Okay? So that's virus. Okay, we're gonna talk about something else. We have viroids. What is this? This is usually a single strain of RNA. That's viroids. This is a plant disease. Plant disease pathogen. Back in Philippines in 1996, it's a flooding area. The Varroids is actually killing lots of the uh, banana trees and the palm trees. That's a Varroids satellite. What is satellite? We talk about a virus. It has a protein and has genetic information, DNA and RNA. Satellite is the DNA or RNA is integrated into protein. But I want to tell you one thing. I've been doing microbiology research for 20 years. I never heard about that. We're never doing that. It's just relatively new satellite. What the other one? Prions. So we say a virus have DNA or RNA and the genetic information and has a protein there. How about I only have protein? Yeah. If you only have protein, this is still gonna be toxication. It will cause medical disease. And this guy, if happening, people will have pulu. What happened is in 1997, if you heard the old news in Great Britain, it's contaminated with a <coughs> microorganism killing millions of cows. And the cows, all they are being very crazy. That's what we call it a medical, di medical disease. And they imported and they contaminated into United States in 2003. 
1997 in England and in 2003 in the US. So very unfortunately, the damage is almost permanent. Even today, you are sending beef jerky to China, to Australia, to Russia, they will be forbidden because they think you're coming from a high-risk area because of the prions, the medical, di medical disease, okay? All these, not using cell as a single unit, so we call it A, C, Liu. So here is gives you an overview what are the types of the bacteria we have, what are they. Next one. We know that bacteria is always bad. We just say, okay, you touch the bacteria, you're gonna get sick. Yes. E. coli. We'll have a diarrhea. The obvious symptom when you touch the bacteria is diarrhea, diarrhea vomiting, and nausea. So E. coli will cause it. But E. coli will also cause urinary tract infection. And the female is a big risk group for urinary tract. Salmonella will cause food poisoning. We already talked about it in the meat, poultry meat products. The viruses, coronavirus, flu, hepatitis. I just have a student who tell me, she got very sick last week. I said, well, what do you have? She said, I run the test. I'm positive for coronavirus, and I'm positive for hepatitis A, and also for influenza A. It's for three things. Then I said, where you got it? He said, I don't know, because it's just a transfer from human to human or from the air bonds. Okay, so that's viruses. This gave you some examples of the really harmful results. What you see, bacterial infraction of the fish, come from vibro, conjectiveness of the eye. And you don't think this is just an eye disease, it's going to be sexual transmitted disease if you see the conjectiveness of the eye. Um, the plant pathogen, we call it a warning could cause tomato blossom and a lot. The last one, lots of people gave me the excuse not attending the class. You sent me the email in the morning and said, Dr. Shen, I'm not going to come in because I have strips rot. You see the information of this rot area? What did that cause? Streptococcus pyogenes. In our exam two, when we talk about the pathogen cause human disease, we will talk about streptococcus. So that's a very good example. But very fortunate. Not always bad, the bacteria. Sometimes it's really good. Do you like beer? Everybody likes beer. There are the two major parts of the beer. What are they? Yes, yeast is one of them. Isle and uh, lager. We call it larger or lager. We'll talk about the beer brewing uh, in the exam three. Okay, you have, you have fun talking about that. Wines, everybody like it. It's an alcoholic fermentation. Generate wines, red wines. If it's coming from the honey, we call it the mead even. Antibiotics. If you have a strep throat when you go to see a doctor, what he, she, he or she gonna give to you? A peel of amosidin or penicillin. It's antibiotics. It's a metabolic products from eastern modes used to curing bacteria. Same thing insecticides, curing those flies. You really like these yogurts, is that right? Fermented products, cheese, yogurt, sour cream, they are going through hormone fermentation, generate lactic acid. Now, which bacteria will generate these amazing products? Lactic acid bacteria, typically lactobacillus. And there is one section we'll talk about the fermentation, 
we'll talk about that. Not only about these, we'll talk about the vinegar manufacturing. How we make the vinegar. Because vinegar is not only one time for the fermentation, it's a secondary fermentation. So here we're going to show you, there are two parts of a microorganism. Could be really harmful, bad, but not always, could be really good. That's we call it a beneficial bacteria in our real life. Okay, we're going to introduce you to you when the semester goes. Next one, we want to mention vaccination. Because of COVID-19, so um, we ask people to do the vaccination. And some people want to do it, some people don't want to do it. So we gave you some basic information. In my first class, what is vaccination? What is talk about the vaccination? So we have two slides. We'll introduce you about that. Okay, look at the picture. Who is the first person? Generated the idea of vaccination is a great Britain medical scientist, Edward Jenner. So let's talk about this. Vaccination. What does the world care of concrete? VACCI come from Latin word means car. So what happened? Back in about 18th century in Great Britain, they suffered from a big disease. It is called Smallpox. Smallpox will be causing the damage of the bone marrow. So you basically lose your immunity. A died of a hundred thousand people died every year. But what is interesting is that when Edward Jenner find there is a group of people is naturally kind of like naturally immune to smallpox, which is called maid. The woman working in the dairy farm, what do he find? He finds those women, the arm area has a lien. The lien is coming from a mild symptom called cowpox. The cowpox is just cause some itching or a little bit uncomfortable, not going to be kill you. So he connected the lead, gets extract, and then injected with this baby in a loyal community. And he also contaminated with this person about smallpox virus. And luckily, this baby is survived. And this is the first time in the history which is recorded people successfully using vaccination, using vaccine, in order to get credits and memorize Edward Jenner. We have this world comes out is called vaccination. This is what it comes. What is vaccination? Vaccination is to basically is inject or contaminated a live body that could be human being or animal with a tiny dose of toxin. Then your body will have some reaction. So, stimulate antigen antibody reaction and will generate a protection material. It's called antibody.
And sometimes not really antibody is only going to be activates the immune activity cell in your bloodstream. Okay, sometimes because it stimulates an antigen antibody reaction. Whatever it is, a small toxin. So most of you have experiences when you have a shots of the vaccination. You have a light fever. You have sometimes you have a vomiting. Sometimes, sometimes you uncomfortable the muscle itching and the um, acid muscle for like a couple of days because your body is reacting with a small dose. However, they will generate an antibody. What is antibody looks like? Is that right? We have a heavy lane, light lane, we have a double sulfide bonds, and we have a variable area. This is attached by an antigen, and we have a longer piece here is FC tab. That will be recognized by, could be a macrophage. So that's what it is, what it works. Okay. When you go to see a doctor, your doctor said, go have, go ahead and have flu vaccination. What is this called? This is called artificial activate immune. Because it's artificially give you a shots and you get the antibody. So that's called artificial activate immune. Okay. What are the examples of the vaccine? We listed here a couple of them. That could be killed microorganism, which means they are already dead. You have an example. Polio. Polio, if you remember when you were young, you have a peel, which is like a candy. Sugar peel, just eat, eat, eat it. And I remember when my son was one year old, he had a peel of polio, he had a vomit in like two days. So we sent him to the uh, Pittsburgh Hospital, Children's Hospital, to see it. So the doctor had the first question to me, did, did he have any vaccination? And I remember we just had a polio, okay? It's a cute microbes, which means the bacteria is dead. However, it still has an immune capability. You can easily understand the toxication is still there. Okay, second one. Attenuated microorganism. MMR is an example. What means attenuated? It is a live cell. Be careful about that. Attenuated. Microbes generate a vaccine. A vaccine. It's a live cell. A good example is MMR. What is MMR? Mumps, measles, and rubella. This is required by every immigrant go to the United States. So I remember when in 2006 uh, summer I came to um, Colorado State University, the university for my PhD study. They require me to show them uh, documents, I get a shots of MMR. But you only need a one shot for your lifetime. And I'll talk to you real quick why it is. Okay. Purify the antigen, the next one. Is purified and antigen. What means purify the antigen? Uh, this is basically means if you have a bacteria cell. This is a part of a bacteria cell you purify. That could be the flagella. Could it be the cell wall? Could it be the capsule? And the very normally we find is from the capsule. For example, the PVC vaccine, which is for pneumococcal ammonia, that's from the capsule of streptococcus ammonia. So that's a purified antigen. Meningitis, which is caused inflammation of the brain, 
that from a purified antigen. Whooping cough. Do you ever take a vaccine called DTAP? Dipseria, tetanus, and the parenthesis, the parenthesis, the P, will cause whooping cough. So that is a purified antigen. Since we talk about DTAP, DTAP itself is coming from chemical-like toxin materials, chemical-like toxins. And we gave them a terminology called toxoil. But if you remember, you immunology uh, card, DTAP, you need a lots of shots in your lifetime. Couple of those when you were very young, at the four years old, six years old, even 12 years old, 15 years, you have another shot. We call it a booster. And for MMR, you only need a one shot per lifetime. Why? Because in our immune system, there are two different types. B cell line and T cell line. This is what we call humoral immune, and this is what we call cell mediated immune. For the DTAP, these toxoid material, they only activate T cell line. So the immune capability is temporary. You have to have lots of booster. And for the B cell line, you generate antibody, which has a longer memorization time. Okay, that's toxoid. Hepatitis, which is genetically engineered, so that's why it's expensive. What is our coronavirus? I mentioned, I forgot about that. What is our coronavirus vaccine? That's come from S protein of RNA, is that right? Or DNA. That will be inhibit the transcription of the virus. So that's something relatively new. That's why people is scared about it. Um, we always believe freedom, so we gave you the knowledge of the vaccination, but it's your freedom to choose whether you're going to do the vaccination or not. And uh, but I would recommend you never do this. Go there, left arm have coronavirus vaccine, right arm have flu virus vaccine, and I'm guarantee you not going to be good in the next couple of days because that's too much stimulation of the immune activity in your body. Okay, so if you do, you have to do it separate. So that's why I gave you some of the information about the vaccination, what it is, where it comes from. Okay, now that's vaccination. Okay, next one, we want to talk a little bit about history. Discovery of microorganism. We just say that microorganism is too small to see. We need a tool, which is called a microscope. So in the history, people trying to create this microscope. Who is the first person to create a microscope? Is Anthony Van Leeuwen Hook. Anthony Van Leeuwen Hook is a Dutch businessman. His main, board, main life is to sell clothes, commercial stuff to the other people and earn the money. A good businessman. His hobby is doing some science. So he likes to make making those microscopes to do the observation of microorganism. And he created this mechanic 
microscope. So you see the holder, you see the lens, you see the, um, uh, we call it a focus. And then also he recorded, it's very interesting, you see these recorded? These back here like this, something like that. Because he recorded that, so we give all the credibility to him. He is the first person using his mechanical microscope to find the microorganism and record it accurately. And later on, people find these actually are not really bacteria. These are bacteria, flagella, and the moving some action, okay? Now, we talk about the microorganism is too small to see. So every microscope needs to be kind of, have some of the enlargements, which is called a magnification, to make sure those two tiny uh, particles can be seen. So what is the magnification of those mechanical microscopes? Anthony Van de Hoek's mechanical microscope as a magnification is not very strong. It's only 200. What's a magnification of the microscope we use in the lab? It's usually 1,000. Of course, with all your immersion, okay, we will talk about next week or maybe Thursday. What is oil immersion? What's the function for that? Uh, but anyway, we give the credits for him. However, there are some criticism for him. He created a microscope, but he refused to sell them to the scientific area. That's the reason the development of the microscope, of, 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 of the microbiology, has been delayed for more than 150 years. So later on, when we talk about Louis Pasteur, and Bob Cook. Can you see? This is 19th century. This is close to 20th century. Where's Anthony Van Hoek? 17th, 18th century. There's about 150 years delay because he refused to send his microscope to public, to the scientific area. So there are some of the criticisms for, for him about that. Okay? So so that's what we have for this discovery of the microorganism. Okay, next where we want to talk about is Louis Pasteur. Uh, Louis Pasteur is a great German scientist. And, uh, um, oh, oh, sorry, the, a French scientist. He created lots of the ideas, but the most important stuff is this swam neck, we call it a swam neck a bottle, which is using to verify the discredit, dis discredits spontaneous reaction in a microbiology level. So this is what happened in the history. So I have this guy, okay. I have a hot pot, let's just say. I'm going to put some of the um, broth in. Okay, then I boil it. I do the boiling. Some people see, after boiling, this broth is transparent. It's very clear. But the other people see, after a couple of hours, it becomes cloudy and become turbidity. What this means? The bacteria are going to grow. So they think bacteria could be spontaneously generated. 
Although by the time Francisco Reddy already being discredited spontaneous generation in a animal level from the maggots, we know that. So there is a question about it. How you gotta be to verify to discredit spontaneous reaction of spontaneous generation in a microbiology level? He's very smart. He did this. Okay, of course you need a control group. So I have two samples. Both of them. I have a cross and I broil. And one of them, I break it. I see the bacteria grow. And another one, I didn't see the bacteria grow. Why? Because the bacteria is hiding on the neck of this of this bottle, hot bottle. This is called a swan neck. This does not mean the bacteria. So, so what is means? Which means this broth did not automatically generate a bacteria. Because if it's automatically generate a bacteria, this will also become stability. But it is clear. Is that right? That tells you where the bacteria comes from. The bacteria originated from the air. Because when you break, it goes down. And here it cannot go down because the swan neck is hiding, let the bacteria hiding here. So that's a very creative tool for that swan neck to discredit a spontaneous reaction in a microbiology level. Now people are trying to do a different research. Okay, they are getting two results. John Tidal and the Ferdinand Cohn, they get opposite results. Um, oh, 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 sorry, John Tido he has find that sometimes you using different bacteria to do. Let's say you have a closed vessel, okay? You have a mud. You have a muddy broth, let's say. From soil, and then you boil it. You see the bacteria is, is gone. You see it is gone. Couple of years later, sorry, a couple of days later, it becomes a tentability. So because it's a closed vessel, so they think this bacteria coming from the broth. But I tell you why, but I tell you no. But how are you gonna argue about that? Because this type of the bacteria is originally is there. So the reason there for the be heat resistant. Okay, their DNA structure has been changed to become heat resistant. There are some of the heat stress protein is activated. But more important, why I give the example from the soil? They could have endospore there. Is that right? They could have endospore. And the endospore you're using boring methods, not gonna be killed them. That's a reason we need to have an autoclave. We need to have a high pressure cooker. Because a high pressure needs to be killed them. Otherwise, you just use boring, you still gonna be survived. There. So in the history, people doing those research to verify that, and John Tido and the Ferdinand Kohn has been confirmed that, and John Tido find that there is some type of the heat resistant bacteria there. And the Ferdinand Kohn find these those heat resistant bacteria could also generate endospores. Uh, we will talk about the detail of the endospore when we move to the uh, sporation, uh, the endospore um, staining technology next week. Okay, we will talk about detail of the industry. So Louis Pasteur did a great work. 
and uh, some other scientists, they finally grow the spontaneous generation from the microbial level. But who is the person really to move in, uh, to for propel the modern microbiology? It is Robococ. And we have to um, recognize that. It is a great German scientist. And he mentioned about the Coke postulate. He generated pure culture. And this we will talk about on Thursday. Okay? So that's all I have today.